Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to Forza Motorsport 4. Today is episode number 58. If you guys are enjoying the content, then be sure to leave a like, comment down below, subscribe, and feel free to hit that join button as it really does help support the channel. Hopefully, you guys enjoy. This episode was streamed live on YouTube. If you want to make sure to catch the streams, then be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation, or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. I'm recording. Right, anyways, uh, we're starting off with the 10-cylinder salute. Uh, and I'm going to be taking this weird and wacky Devon GTX for this one. Uh, we're going to be starting off with Sedona Raceway, Bernie's Alps, Sunset Peninsula, Infineon, and then finishing off with Maple Valley. Let's get going. All right, here we go. We've got a weird and wacky car, the Devon GTX. Ooh, that interior looks quite snazzy. Ah! Get out of the way! There goes the Lexus LFA. Oh my gosh. This thing is an absolute tank. Look at the Gallardo up there. Lamborghini Gallardo. Lamborghini Gallardo, Lamborghini Gallardo. USB port didn't go bad and battery kept going down really quickly. Still have it as my main phone. I still got it as an emergency phone, turn it on from time to time so the battery doesn't inflate. Yeah, that is a, an issue with uh, Samsung phones at the moment as well. A lot of them, the uh, batteries are starting to inflate if you don't use them for a while. I think that's actually what happened to my old phone. Uh, I was looking at seeing if I could sell it for a couple of quid. Because I don't use it. But uh, the battery, it just wouldn't... It wouldn't respond to anything I plugged into it, so... I might give it another shot today. See if it responds today. Yeah. Let's have a look at the interior, shall we? Oh, look at that! Quite a nice looking interior, isn't it? Oh, it's actually using the time from the actual Xbox on the uh, dials. It's not the time in game. That's, that's interesting. Technically speaking, the Xbox time is incorrect, but that says 1432. That's kind of cool. It's a detail that I shouldn't be focusing on, but it's cool nonetheless. This thing is one of the worst cars I've driven in this game yet. Um, I'm going to be completely honest. This thing's unstable. It may just be the fact... Oh, my hand's catching on fire because I'm flight battery. What do you mean, why? Oh yeah, F FH4 and 5, they just... A lot of the interiors of the cars aren't fully functioning. Which is really stupid. I hate it with a passion.
Oh, that's good. Yeah, the telemetry fe feature is... I mean, the only thing that changes is, like, slight design features, but, like, the body acceleration still exists, and it's been, like, like it the entire time. Tires. Heat. I mean, heat means absolutely nothing in this game. Which I'm hoping for the next game, like, obviously they're pushing tire wear and whatnot, and like tire compounds, which is awesome to see. So I'm hoping that uh, tire wear actually has a significant impact in this game, or in Motorsport 8, sorry. So it'd be nice to see tire wear actually making a making a return. But yeah, I, I have decided I'm going to be buying Motorsport 8. I have made that decision. It is going to cost a significant amount of money because I'm going to be buying Motorsport 8. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to play like a couple hours of Motorsport 8, then a couple of hours of Motorsport 4. Just so I don't run out of like content. But I do want to play both games at the same time. Um, the release day of motorsport I actually don't know when it comes out 5th is a Thursday I believe I'm working Wednesday so I may have the Thursday off so I could actually do we're not getting a Game Pass for first month and then consider buying it full or wait for a sale. Well, the issue with that is the fact that I don't have Game Pass. And I can't get it on PC. Uh, because of the fact that Microsoft have three of their fingers up their bum holes. <laughs> the way that I said that, that's fucking great. Uh, because Microsoft... They're a little bit lazy. So my Windows Store. Windows Store has always been very broken since the introduction of it on Windows 8. But Windows 8, it somewhat worked, right? And then it's just evolved into this state of disrepair. And it's become worse and worse and worse. It was exactly the same on the Windows Phone. Their store that they made on the Windows Phone was terrible, right? Newsflash. It's exactly the same on the Windows PC. And unfortunately, because of that, it is an absolute nightmare. In fact, applications don't install with the Windows app anymore. It's already a nightmare to try and find the apps, but once you've found what you want to install and you try to install it... Yeah, so mine's completely corrupted. And the only way I can do it is by factory resetting my PC. I'm not willing to do that just to be able to sort it out. The cool thing about it is that I'm buying the game on Steam, which they have a fairly decent refund policy. Even if you pre-order a game, you can still get a refund when the game releases if it's under two hours. Um, so... I doubt I'm going to refund it because I'm probably going to still need it for when I go through the main series. For the mega series, but... You know, there is the potential that I do just turn around and go, Joe, you know what, I don't want this. I don't want to play this. And then I'll finish the series at technically the end of the first generation of Forza, which technically is finished now. We're moving on to the second reboot of Forza on those, which is going to be, you know, Motorsport 1. I would like for them to make a new version of Horizon, maybe a refresh of Horizon. 
give it three years. So release Horizon 6 in 2024, but call it something else. Give it a new world, a new identity. Like, I get Forza Horizon is like... It's sort of the brand, sort of the name of that open world part of Forza. Come up with something new. Have a fresh start and give Forza the chance that it deserves to actually become what it did 10 years ago. <laughs> Forza Vertical. <laughs> oh, that's great. Do you know what? If they made a Forza with planes, they'd definitely call it Forza Vertical. <laughs> That's fucking good. I love that. But yeah, it would be nice to see some uh, some new stuff added to it. It's EA. You have to pay 10 euros to unlock the option to see the Ultimate Edition. That's great. I am really hoping that they will do, like, I don't want them to do an Ultimate Edition now because they've sort of put the pre-orders out, so if you pre-order the game and then they're like, oh yeah, by the way, we've got this version that you can get, I'll be a bit fucked off. I really do think, unless in a year's time they're going to make a, a deluxe edition that contains, like, the base game and then 2024 season. This is the thing that I'm hoping that WRC is going to do. And they haven't confirmed it and they probably won't confirm it till in 10 months time when they're in looking at getting a new, new version coming out. The thing that I'm looking forward to seeing and hoping that becomes a thing is that WRC is going to have uh, seasons. You pay like £20 for every year. They'll do like three or four years and then they'll do like a big refresh. Or even they might just keep this game forever. And whenever they update the game, they update it with new content. If they're updating graphics for a specific rally, they can just upgrade the graphics as and when. And maybe in like 10 years time they'll make a new game. Call it WRC2. But I, I really do think and I think the model will work for them. Because unfortunately WRC doesn't have enough changes from year to year to justify an entire new game. To be fair, FIFA doesn't either, but FIFA has a lot of changes with like players going to different teams, so in a way, there is enough significant change that that could happen. WRC, there just isn't enough change year to year. Unfortunately. There might be one or two different rallies, and then there'll be... The cars will change. There'll be some different teams, or a different drivers will move around. There isn't significant change that can justify paying £40 for another game. Especially if people struggle to justify paying £40 or even £60 for a new FC game. So, if they're doing seasons... And here's the thing as well. If they're looking... Because they're one... When you look at F1, it comes out early in the season. It comes out fairly early. Now, the WRC season starts even earlier than the Formula 1 season. And, yeah, it finishes a little bit later. There is the potential that they could be looking to do that. And they'll release a 24th season. What? March next year? So that you'll actually have the entire year to pretty much play that season's content. I don't see why they couldn't do that. But that's just me. Apparently, I, my opinion is invalid. Especially when it comes to EA games. So, yeah. Hopefully. I, I've got high hopes for the, the EA WRC game. Only because of the fact that 
from what they've shown off gameplay wise actually looks quite good um i'm using the last wrc game i'm using wrc generations as a comparison as opposed to dirt rally because i quite enjoyed the wrc game and its content and I know this new game, it's not going to have the same stuff that Dirt Rally had, right? The things that I enjoyed about Dirt Rally, though, was literally just time trial. Maybe the, the weekly events that were there, the fact that you just had a random rally you could take part in. But, like, if there's actually going to be a career mode, which Dirt Rally 2... Let's be honest, Dirt Rally has never had a career mode. Anyone that says, oh, but it does have a career... No, that's not career mode. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, the build-your-own-car looks awesome. The fact that you can choose body panels. I know they're going to be the crappy... What we call, like, unlicensed vehicles. And it's going to have an unlicensed car look to it. Because, you know, it can't look like anything else. But the fact that you get to go through and pick these customization options. Yeah. I actually like the idea that you can build your own car. You can make your own car. You can choose where the engine is. Whether it's rear-engined or front-engined or mid-engined. I'm obviously going to be picking front-engine because... Most of the rally cars that I drive are front-engine four-wheel drive, and it's the formula that I found is the best. Like, even when it came to, like, the Quattro, which was mid-engined, I struggled a lot with that, so... I'm picking no engine. I'm just going to stick my feet through the floor. Foot-powered. Pedal-powered car. <laughs> I was trying to think what the uh, the film was, what the show was. Flintstones. How many feet per second does your car manage? Many. Have to get your co-driver to uh, dip in with some of the power then. But yeah, I'm I'm really excited for it. The only thing I'm concerned about is the swapping over to Unreal. Now I know my PC is going to have zero issues with it. Co-masters know how to make a game work really well. But the issue is, every single game that they've done before this has been running off of their own Ego engine. And Ego is very well optimized. It's very good for running on lower end systems. And like Dirt Rally, it runs on like medium graphics at 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. Dirt Rally 2.0, this is a game that came out in 2019. That's quite a new game. Even F123, a game that is running on the Ego engine. Driver level 70, very nice. Even F123, a game that is running on this Ego engine, is quite easily capable of playing at 60 FPS on the Steam Deck. The issue that I'm seeing, this is technically the first game that Codemasters has done that is going to be running off of uh, the Unreal Engine. Now, Unreal, I know, is very good. I've, I've seen some of the content that Unreal has released, and it is just that. It's Unreal. Um, I believe they did a tech demo with the Rimac, where they had, like, variable uh, watchamajigs variable assets and variable like terrain and that demonstration was absolutely nuts like that entire forest having the um was it a rimac no it was a rivian sorry why was i saying rimac the rivian 
that electric truck that everyone is on about. Um, but they did a tech demo with that. And uh, that got me so... Yeah, both of them begin with R, so pretty close. That tech demo got me so excited for the future of racing games because of just how insane it looked. Like, the terrain itself, it looked like... Obviously, forests are one of the most difficult things that you can actually make terrain-wise. Especially when it comes to a racing game. Like, tarmac is fairly repetitive, so textures don't even have to be that extreme. Um, obviously, when you're looking at grassy areas to the sides, again, these are quite easy to replicate. These are quite easy to design, to make. The thing with forests, they're so unpredictable, they're so random, and again, obviously WRC is going to prove this if it can pull it off, because in a way, yeah, they're designed and they're basically 3D modelled, but they are fairly difficult to make look good, to make them look good. What the fuck is my English today? I think if Codemasters pulls it off, then they're going to prove everyone wrong. Yeah, I'm really excited for WRC. Push comes to shove. Very excited for it. Hopefully everyone's having a good day, though. If you are enjoying the stream, feel free to share the content. Feel free to drop a like, as it does help support the channel. We've probably got another hour, maybe two, depending on how I feel after the next championship, because I'm going to do one more championship. And then I may do a second one, so it may be like six altogether. It all depends. I might do that other one as well, because that will be a short one anyways, so. I think I may have issue. What is your issue? Oh shit, I've got, uh, I've, fuck. I've accidentally gone in the pit lane. Way! <laughs> I think that's the first time I've finished a race through the pit lane. <laughs> All right, that's that's a first for this series. Lovely. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Peace out. <laughs>